Parliament passes law on illicit drug. Island community sinking. And PNG joins nations to celebrate International Day. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. The recent attack on the country's finance system is the transnational crime. Governor for Northern Province Gary Jufa made this statement yesterday, adding transnational crime is the most dangerous form of crimes. Transnational crimes are the most dangerous forms of crimes. Governor for Northern Province Gary Jufa made this statement while giving his support to the dangerous drugs, controlled substance bills passed in Parliament yesterday. And the only way they may affect the nation is in how our image is tarnished by the Western media. But transnational crimes are crimes that are stealing from an entire economy, crimes that are stealing from the future of a nation. Adding the recent IFMS ransomware attack is a transnational crime. For instance, you look at what has happened with our IFMS system in finance. That's a transnational crime committed by sophisticated transnational criminals. You look at the illegal logging that's taking place, the illegal fishing that's taking place, and the cartels that have set up very clever tax avoidance schemes and operate at will and whim, having compromised most of our systems, so we all turn a blind eye and pretend it doesn't happen, especially when we're here praying every morning. With the increase of drug trafficking in Papua New Guinea in recent decades, Jufa expressed concerns that while there are laws on transnational crimes, mechanisms designed to enforce in these laws have been dismantled. We'll have to look at how we can finance these organizations, how we can ensure they have the capacity so that they can go out there and perform their duties diligently. I mean, to carry out the activities of investigations into these type of offenses, you need technical expertise. You need people with experience. You need people who are dedicated to this course and nothing else. Jiffa elaborated with making reference to the horse race machines case of 2004, which cost the country about 44 million kina a year in potential tax revenue. That case was supposed to have been wrapped up in six months. It took four years before we shut down the syndicates that were involved in this because of the volumes of money involved and the compromised levels of government and officials in such a manner that we couldn't do anything. And we were fortunate that at that time the government supported us with finance. We had the capacity to do that. Kilawani National MTV News. The National Intelligence Office, the intelligence agency of Papua New Guinea established by the National Intelligence Organizations Act, an act of parliament in 1984, is no longer effective as they should be due to lack of funding by the government. Governor for Northern Province, Gary Jufa, stressed the importance of the NIO yesterday during parliament sitting. And while I have the opportunity, let me mention the role of the NIO, which is a very important organization the eyes and ears of our economy, but not funded adequately, not supported, allowed to deteriorate to a point where they're no longer as effective as they ought to be. For instance, Mr. Speaker, 1975, we had 150 NIO officers. Today, we have less than 30. When an economy grows, its intelligence community and functions also grow to be able to accommodate the need to understand threats and opportunities presented to our economy. So I use this opportunity to also just state that because our intelligence community is vital in the fight against transnational crimes. They are the ones that are going to look at who's coming into our country and determine whether they're in here to assist us or they're in here as threats against our economy and our future. Any person caught in drug trafficking, being in possession of, even consumption of illicit drugs, now faces a maximum penalty of life imprisonment under the newly passed Controlled Substance Bill 2021. This comes following the government's strong stance against the use and abuse of illicit drugs. 
A maximum penalty of life imprisonment for those involved in international drug trafficking being in possession of and consumption of dangerous or illicit drugs. This penalty, among others, is effective following the passage of the Controlled Substance Bill 2021 in Parliament yesterday by an overwhelming majority of 71 votes. Speaker, the Controlled Substance Bill has a unique nature as it is both a regulatory and criminal law. Mr. Speaker, the regulatory controls under the Controlled Substance Bill are namely the creation of Schedules 1 to 4. The Controlled Substance Bill creates a classification system for the categories of illicit substances, plants and drugs. The National Narcotics Control Board given more powers in this act. This power is exercised upon the advice of the Technical Advisory Panel, which is a panel technical experts established under the bill to provide technical advice to the board. Licensing provisions under this act is set out for regulatory purposes. Mr. Speaker, these licenses were created to give the National Narcotics Bureau adequate ability to control the use of illicit and abuse of illicit drugs and precursors. When presenting the bill, Brian Kramer, Minister for Justice, said the bill has gone through numerous reviews and consultations since 2019 and it is consistent with international standards. This controlled substance bill is consistent with international standards in criminalizing transaction, transnational offenders such as drug trafficking. The penalties under this bill would now qualify the drug-related offenses as predicate crimes to money laundering, hence allowing law enforcement authorities with the option of pursuing proceeds of crime as they are generated from or used in these crimes. Dr. Alan Marat, speaking for the opposition, said they fully support the bill, noting that amendments will continue, adding that there should be no parole for offenders. The opposition believe that it is time that this kind of legislation is brought uh, to Parliament for, for approval because a lot of people have been talking about it, about commercializing some of these uh, uh, drugs. And uh, we certainly see that um, needs to be properly regulated by the use of illicit drugs and that parole should never be considered. Let him rot in prison. Northern Province Governor Gary Jufa also pointed out matters on the penalties. I note in here it says in some of the penalty clauses fines not exceeding. It's a bit of confusion here. I would say there should be minimum fines imposed. And I feel that some of the penalties here are far too lenient. Also, can we look at the Bail Act in, in regards to these laws? Further raising queries on enforcement agencies and mechanisms. I'm also curious about the mechanics of how these laws are going to be enforced, because it makes great mention of the National Narcotics Bureau here, which, as I understand, was established for the purposes of awareness of the dangers of illicit substances. But the enforcing mechanisms are held with customs, police, and the defense force. Kilawani National, MTV News. The government's introduction of the dominant player levy as part of its revenue in the 2022 national budget has copped a lot of criticism even after the passing of the budget on Tuesday this week. BSB Financial Group Limited CEO Robin Fleming has expressed concern on the new levy as well as trade union bodies such as the PNG Trade Union Congress and the Public Employees Association of PNG. The dominant player levy is aimed at the banking and telecommunication sectors of PNG's economy. The opposition was very vocal against the dominant player levy in Parliament this week during 2022 budget debate. Of course, the banks and telephone companies will pass on the extra cost onto our people. BSP will probably withdraw from non-profitable towns and outstations. It's branches, Mr. Speaker. Prior to the passing of the budget, the PNG Trade Union Congress slammed a new levy, calling for the budget to be recalled and asking Prime Minister James Marape to have Treasurer Ian Ling Staki and his foreign advisers to be sacked, given the likely effects on super funds and workers in the country. And so our super funds are going to now feel the pinch of that, that levy that is passed on to them by the government. And so it will come down. So suppose all super fund, all 
Philip is like pinch, they will pass it on to you and me. There are better options that the government should have looked at. We've spoken, discussed with the manufacturers, people in the manufacturing industry. They reckon that if the illegal cigarettes that are in the market at the moment are costing the government around about 900 million kina, why can't we go down that road? BSP Financial Group Limited CEO Robin Fleming also commented on the issue earlier this week, expressing concern that it will have an impact on its shareholders in light of the bank making profits. It's going to push our overall tax rate somewhere between 45 to 50 percent in PNG. So it is a difficult tax, certainly going to affect our shareholders. CEO Fleming says the new levy is very unfair on the bank, given its support to the government through other contributions annually. We don't think it's an equitable tax, and what are the messages? Part of one of the messages we're trying to get across is that BSP is not looking for any special treatment, but we do look for equal treatment. The government defended its stance on its introduction of the levy during budget debate. The company that is only going to go from 900 million to 700 million sees justification to go down again and tax ordinary people so just so we can make 900 million? Yeah. Huh? Where's the rationale in this? Well, as we look into the economy, I just ask to those who pick the cream of the economy, if leaders can be sacrificing, if the economy out there is hard for the ordinary, those of us who make super profits, why can't you for once say it's all right, I'm going to profit one year of dividends? Public Employees Association executives yesterday in expressing their frustration on the government's failure to fulfill promised salary adjustments for public servants in the 2022 budget criticized the new levy. When they leave public service, that's the only savings they have. And for the government to go and touch it makes no economic sense, no empowerment sense, no humanity sense. As a result of numerous concerns raised on the new levy, the Prime Minister announced during budget debate that its implementation will be delayed till July next year when the new government is formed following national general elections. And so for the moment we understand taking 190 million kin off from my favourite bank, or taking 95 million kin off from, from a, uh, this cell might make them go broke, so we will pass the budget today, but we will put it off, defer the implementation and put it in the schedule of the implementation to post-July. We will support the Trade Union Congress. Yes, maybe the Prime Minister has deferred the implementation of the tax to July. But our fight is not about deferment. Our fight is to scrap the tax. Dennis Orere, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more stories after these short messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. Climate change remains to be a threat to the coastal maritime people's livelihoods, security, well-being and over the years has added to other development challenges. As has been emphasised over the years, climate change cannot be stopped, but how best we work together to mitigate its impacts will determine the future of thousands. Climate change is something we cannot avoid nor ignore because its impacts can evidently be seen and felt on a daily basis. Responsible authorities in Papua New Guinea have acknowledged that climate change is real. The outcome of the recent COP26, of which I will be making a parliamentary statement, in that, in that there has been some outcomes of which to address loss and damages of those communities that are impacted by the impacts of climate change. In PNG, dozens of news articles, documentaries, policies and bills have been done and passed on climate change and its impacts on people and their livelihoods. Yet, 
interventions in addressing these impacts are rare. Medang district, the Bell language speaking people, especially Ward 1, Ambenob, the Kranget, Bilia, Punitibon and Ulifun Island communities are at the front line experiencing and battling the adverse impacts of climate crisis. Kranget Island, located off the shores of mainland Medang and is home to over 4,000 people, have had its fair share of climate change induced challenges as outlined by the local leaders. Level blow solwara emi raisi kamantap na iwok long brukim brukim down this pla island na island iwok long kam liglik pastem em island emi i big pla houses tap close to long side long solwara especially long nambi sol sem tu emi got problem so plenty well water now mi pla digim long side you looking long side ya em tu solwara iwok long kam go inset na mix up before em no got well water em good pla mi pla can drink fresh Due to sea level rise, coastal flooding and erosion, the island is on the verge of splitting into two parts. Less than 60 meters of land is holding the island together and only time will tell on how long Kranget Island will remain as one before it splits into two parts by the force of the sea. No, I'm 59 meters straight. Long. 59. This like, I'm maybe some of some plus solver no good through it come, maybe this like, year or next year, I'm by Brookie Molgeta by gone. Women worry about what the future holds for their children and grandchildren. Behind now by all Tumbuna, all Pikinini, all Tumbuna, by all stop all same one. Time this Plabagara pay me come now. I come, I come, I come now. Bagara pi mi pla, all this pla time, yeah. Suppose me ndai ba yu pla isa po li semba ni. Now so alwara bagara, giraun tu no gat. E mi sa toki mo li start. Ol tumbu na bulo mi. Yu pla school strong. Na yu pla walk money ba yu pla start good. Traditional ways of life and sustainability that has been practiced and passed on from generations have been lost and there is no way to reverse this. The question now is not of if, but of when. The people will find themselves homeless due to climate-induced migration. Island, Solwara, Ibrukim, by me, people belong this island, by me, I stop where? I'm so concerned about me. What one councillor, Mr. Rodney Selan, expressed that the future of most of them is to migrate to higher grounds. They are now urging the national government to have a roundtable meeting with the Medang Provincial Government, the Office of Climate Change and the local ward representatives of Ambenob LLG to discuss on impact projects that will help mitigate the impacts of climate change and also on the future of the people who are susceptible to the detrimental effects of climate change. Florence John Duo, National MTV News. December 3rd is International Day of Persons with Disabilities and on this day, PNG joins other countries to observe the day. With the theme Leadership and Participation of Persons with Disabilities toward an inclusive, accessible and sustainable post-COVID-19 world, this enables PWDs to have a voice in the world. Here's Jamie Harrow with more. The International Day of Persons with Disability is observed on the third day of December as it signifies persons with disability having a voice and an equal participation on all platforms. Today we visited the Cheshire Homes in Port Moresby to check on what the organization has planned for the event. According to the Cheshire Homeschool Program Coordinator, Shelley Tuvi, this day is always observed. However, due to COVID-19, the non-governmental organization has cancelled the event but managed to take care of PWDs. The theme for this year, 2021, for International Day for Persons with Disabilities, is leadership and participation of persons with disabilities towards an inclusive 
accessible and sustainable post COVID-19 world. That's our theme for this year. Unfortunately, in um, Cheshire, we, we didn't um, observe or celebrate the day due to the pandemic. And that is a very big challenge towards our ourselves here and uh, the, our, us officers working here in Cheshire and also our persons with disability in Cheshire. Raised at an early age at the Cheshire home and now a carer, Samo Jeffrey was disappointed that they did not celebrate the International Day of Persons with Disability today, but was grateful for Cheshire homes always having a heart to help. Faced with pandemic challenges, Cheshire Home physiotherapist Marilyn Tuasa gave an account on how they have managed to care for PWDs. Yeah, currently we have 17 of the residents who are live here. Uh, ten of them, they have severe disability, and seven of them, they are like semi, semi-dependent. They can do some of the things themselves, and some things they need assistance that carers can do for them. And here, we have carers who work uh, shift, like in hospital. Mostly we depend on donations. Cheshire disability depend on donations and the very first thing that it affects is our partners who come and donate things for us. Huh? Because of this uh, restriction, we no longer allowing people to go in and then you know share their gifts with the uh, residents there too. And also Cheshire Disability Services PNG hopes to see changes amidst the pandemic with help from the partners moving forward. Jamie Harrow, National MTV News. Landowners from the PNG LNG project site in Hela province will receive their long-awaited payments on Tuesday next week. The feedback to issue the warrant to the Department of Petroleum and Energy came after the group of landowners fronted up at the Treasury House on Wednesday, demanding the warrant be released. The landowners claim the 120 million kina payment was a commitment made by the government under the National Executive Council's Decision 119. After waiting for months for the Treasury Department to release the warrant to the Department of Petroleum and Energy, the landowners from the PNG LNG project areas received the favorable response they were longing to hear from the Treasury Department yesterday. This is next week, 16 million guinea warrant by Goran Lo DB. 60 million guinea. Next week, Tuesday. So now, all officers have them. We said to work the budgets, the local demolition can work, but I'll sit down with the weekend. Start low today, going up tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, sit down, Tuesday, by will release the warranty go down longer, DP. By 10 or 9 o'clock, by will release the warranty go down. However, spokesperson Bill Pajako said the battle is not yet over. He said the outcome of the warrant will be decided by the Department of Petroleum and Energy. So one block again, you make him now and 60 million kina. 60 million kina, maybe some of the time here down the line. But fight by me, by me, fight yet. From DB, ball walk, it walk. How all are buying? Who said all are buying? Be any one in process. I'm something, a uh, 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 process law department, DB. Work with treasury, I'm releasing a warrant as only go down. Time more releasing warrant, they go down and work with treasury and finish. Lord, this is 60 million kina. The spokesperson also urged the group of landowners to put the money to good use on the various project sites if the payment will be made. All I can make sure this money go and work, work. Government team back up. Online lo monitoring more projects, one project you walk in, lo various project areas, blow you back all come and shake him walk, you walk along. So you know walk him and sell you yet. Love lo government to him stop. 
I'm going to hold him you too. All right, look, government now. I'm not going to give him money. Now, guys, I drink beer and I piss him down the drain. Huh? I'm now time to make him cry here. Me blow the house and make him blow the house, but then I stand up again. Podivai National MTV News. And now looking at the NAS fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank Style Pacific, Yokina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3850 Australian dollars, 0.2379 Euro and 30.93 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher. Coffee and cocoa closed lower and copper closed higher. Crude oil is trading higher, palm oil and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. You're watching National MTV News, Chukai Sports is next. Stay tuned for the details. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. The Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, James Marapi, yesterday launched the new PNG Sports Policy 2020 to 2050. The policy focuses on using sport as a development vehicle for PNG. Sport simply means an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against one another for entertainment. Although predominantly a social pastime in Papua New Guinea, the new sports policy in the country, launched yesterday by the Prime Minister James Marape, is intended to be a policy framework to use sports as a development pathway for Papua New Guinea. This approved national sports policy 2020 to 2050 will be used as an initiative to improve the overall coordination of sports and sports for development in PNG as part of our integral human development. The main initiative to this national sports policy will see, for the first time, the endorsement of direct annual funding for all national sports federations in this country. Uh, Prime Minister, I just want to say thank you very much for that. There are seven key focus areas of the policy which include sports development, governance and management, implementation, resourcing, participation, high performance and research, education and training. I believe this policy has been developed for the Federation. It's all encompassing. It's embracing sport in a much bigger way and also, more importantly, it's putting sport on our, our budget calendar as an integral part, but more importantly, an important part of the development of this country. Prime Minister James Marape says the national sports policy 2020 to 2050 will ensure there is a pathway for sports as a career option. That year is within reach. It reaches this generation the earlier generation and the next generation. Sports cannot just be uh, activity of lesser as it was and once in a four year we do a South Pacific game preparations or the Olympic game preparations, but it must be part of the lifestyle of our country, our economy going forward and it must be a viable option for young people as they come out of our school academy sports systems if some are gifted in the area of sports, well, they make their life out of sports. Minister for Sports Wesley Raminai says the policy also seeks to address law and order issues through sports and integrate sports into the school system and in future provide scholarships for talented individuals. This policy is designed to integrate and align with law and order, which we must be responsible enough to help contain to make our country a safer place for everyone. The policy is to integrate with education as we use sport as a vehicle to teach good values for our future citizens as we 
you support to obtain scholarships in country or abroad to increase the education capacity of our people. The president of the Olympic Committee said John Dawan in Kura acknowledged the new policy and challenged the government to make sure that funding was available for implementation. That the first policy was uh, launched in uh, 2004, 2004, and at that time, I did challenge the uh, the con consultant from Griffiths University. It's great to have a policy. Then what? Who's going to fund it? And so, Prime Minister, I'm throwing the challenge to you too. Who is going to be funding this policy? Fidel Sukina Trukai Sports. You're watching Trukai Sports. We'll have more stories after the break. Trukai Sports. Welcome, welcome back to Trukai Sports. After being knocked out during the Cup semi-finals of this year's Sports Talk 7s, PC Ravens of Lay will regroup and go back to the drawing board. The former Cup champions want to maintain their position as one of the top Rugby 7s teams in the country. Back-to-back, -back, Sports Talk 7s champions, PC Ravens of Lay, were knocked out in the Cup semi-finals of this year's competition. In a shock result, Ravens lost their encounter against the eventual Cup runners-up, Cecil Park of Port Mosby. In a thrilling matchup that went into extra time after the scores were locked at 24-all at the full-time whistle. Cecil Park eventually scoring the golden point try to win the match 29 points to 24. Obviously we wanted to defend our title for the third consecutive year, but unfortunately uh, we didn't make it to the finals. But I will try our best to go back and yeah, go back to the drawing board, get the basics right and come back next year. I think we need to work more on our fitness because yeah, the team that beat us in the semi-finals, I think um, fitness-wise they were uh, much prepared than us. So I think that's the thing that we will work on. And um, I think new, recruit new young ones to come in and give us this energy that we would need in the uh, later half of the matches. Ravens have taken the loss in their stride and are determined to come back bigger and better in next year's competition. With the addition of new faces into their squad, the team from Lay are looking to freshen up and strengthen their sides attacking and defensive capabilities. This year we recruited, um, I think, three boys. Uh, one of them was, um, it's a, he's a uh, seventh touchdown player, Andrew Torolom, uh, which he did, yeah, he did well throughout the tournament. Uh, we were yeah, fortunate to have him in our team to add more speed into our team, yeah, and creativity as well. Huxley Lovai, Chukai Sports. And that ends Chukai Sports, the weather details coming up next. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region only. Showers and thunderstorms right across the region in Port Moresby, Daru, Kerama, Alatau, and Papandita. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that's been the news, sport and weather for Friday, 3rd December 2021. Until next time, pleasant viewing, be safe and good night.